Metal Jesus, and I'm back again with a good friend of mine, Kinsey. How's it going? Good, I'm glad to be here. Kinsey, I met a couple years ago working at a local retro gaming store called Another Castle, and you are now part of the Seattle Retro Gaming Expo. I am, I do all of their PR work, social media, pretty much everything having to do with Facebook, Twitter, all of that. Awesome. And you also are part of their podcast. I am. It's uh, so much fun. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's an awesome podcast. Um, today, you're here to help me with... Uh, DS Hidden Gems. No, uh, that's going to be so awesome. I can't <laughs> I can't wait because, uh, i got to be honest, Like, I haven't played a lot of DS games, and so uh, I needed to bring in an expert, which uh, I think you are. I played a lot of DS back in the day. That was my one system I played when it first came out. Awesome. Now we have 24 games that you and I have picked out, and so we're going to spread this over three episodes. We're going to have stuff at the end of each video to kind of talk about the hardware and some of the other things, and we're going to have some honorable mentions. Let's take a look. Alright, Kinsey, what first game do you have to show me here? Uh, the first game that we have up today is the SMT Devil Survivor. I have this game and um, yeah, I played it a little bit, so so tell me about this series. Like it's pretty hardcore. It is. It's a pretty like strategy turn-based RPG. Uh -huh. And it takes place in a Japanese high school, like most yeah. Atlas <laughs> games do. <laughs> no, they make Persona, right? Yeah, they okay. make all the Persona the, yeah. games, which are I mean, my favorite. Yeah. If there was one on the DS, it'd probably be here. But, <laughs> but now, what, what what makes this different from, like, see, the Persona series? Um, this one's a little bit different because it's a little bit more on the tactical end. Oh, okay. Like, it's a grid-based game where once you get close enough to the enemy, oh, okay. it goes into turn-based. Oh, okay. So it's kind of unique in that way, I think. It's really fun. Okay, very cool. I really enjoyed it. Okay, I'm gonna pick up the next one here, and that is gonna be a shooter that I think is really awesome. It's called Nano Stray. Now, have you played this? I haven't. I've heard so many good things about it. Oh, that. dude, this game is gorgeous. So, so one, it's it's full 3D, so it really shows off the DS really well. Um, it's hard as balls, though. Like, like I was getting my ass kicked all the time. <laughs> That's okay, though. That's kind of refreshing in this like day and age yeah. of gaming. Yeah, absolutely. So this is definitely one of the better shooters. Uh, I don't know if there's a lot of shooters on the DS, but this is one of my favorites. And also, cool. I've heard that the second one is really good, too. Mm -hmm. So what do you have? Uh, next, we have Rhapsody, a musical adventure. A me no, is there a, <laughs> is there an Xbox 360 game that's based on this? Um, yes. A e Eternal Sonata. Yes. Are, are they the same world? Same? I, they're not the same world, and okay. I don't even really know if they're connected, but they remind me of each other. Okay. It's very musical. Both of them are like that. Okay. Huh. Um, this one's really cool. You play as princess, and you're going through trying to find your love. <laughs> okay. So it's a little bit of a girly RPG, but I definitely recommend it because it still has a lot of the hardcore elements. Now, when you say musical, so what parts of the game are musical? All the most, well, at least most of the characters play an instrument, and that's how they attack. Huh. The, so, so like, there's a guitar shredder dude or something, or, or is it all classical music? It's all classical music. Oh, okay. The whole thing's classical music. Okay. Um. So vinyl, vinyl a, just like yeah, shredding. Yeah. Or like with a cornet. There's a cornet too. <laughs> oh, okay. It's pretty adorable. Huh. And the the biggest enemy is, is the little cats. They're the minions. Wait, that's worth the, it. That's the enemy. It's one of the enemies. A cat. Yeah. Well, I guess yeah. And they're it, adorable. Some, some cats are crazy. And it is a uh, Nipponichi in IS America, so. Oh, cool. It's gonna have the adorable element in it as well. <laughs> okay. Well, my next game is going to be Ninja Town. Now, oh, it's so good. <laughs> you know, you know, okay, so so here's the thing. Uh, when I first heard of this, actually, there's a there's a ninja game in this universe on the iPad and iPhone, which is a platformer. Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh wow, there's like this. Uh, it, it, this is basically a, a tower defense game. Yes. And super fun, and so totally different than, than the other game that, that is out there, but just as adorable. I mean, it's all ninjas. They're all cuddly ninjas, you know, ninjas with beards and stuff. It's really <laughs> weird, but uh, yeah, definitely an awesome game. Yeah. All right. Next, we're gonna have Rune Factory, and mm. I absolutely loved Moon Factory or Rune Factory. Moon fa <laughs> <laughs> We'd like to thank By the way, room. what have we been drinking today? Uh, we have been drinking my own concoction homebrew. It is a black IPA and it is Ooh. hoppy, malty, and wonderful. There's a little spice going on there. It's my favorite one I've brewed so far. Yes, yes, so <laughs> to the moon. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so Rune Factory. Rune Factory. Um, it's really good for those Harvest Moon fans that want something a little bit more because hmm. it's also an action RPG. 
Oh, and okay. you can earn your rune points or RP by mm. farming your vegetables and things that grow all the way through and they don't die. Hmm. And you can get extra points and that can be used while you're farming or in the dungeons. Is this game, is that also available on any other system or is it just a DS? Just DS. Oh, cool. Mm -hmm. As right. far as I know. For me, I'm going to pick uh, Retro Game Challenge. This game actually is one of the uh, the rarer DS games in my collection. Oh yeah? Believe it or not. Yeah, this game nice. uh, just keeps going up in value. And it's so interesting. Basically, this is a game where you travel back to the 1980s to take on a, a, a gaming master. I and, love it already. Yeah, and so, <laughs> so you go back and like, for instance, the first game is all based on Galaxian, I guess. It's called Cosmic something or other, I forget. But but uh, it's hard. Like, like this like retro games are. Yeah, oh, oh, no, but this is even harder. Because, really? Yes, because because <laughs> not only do you have to just sort of survive, but you have to do certain um, challenges to 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 beat the master. So I think that's the reason why a lot of people love this game because if you're into retro games and you like them difficult, this is this is it. Plus, it's wacky Japanese. All right, and this is actually my favorite game on the system. Huh? Favorite game, Dragon Quest Heroes Rocket Slime. It's wonderful. You play as the slime, which is the mascot for the Dragon Quest series, and right. pretty much everybody knows it has its own controller. Yeah. And it's a action game, or action adventure, I guess. And you come into like the slime town, which has a name, it's not called Slime Town. <laughs> um, and all the slimes are all gone, they've all been captured. And you have to go through the levels, kind of top down Zelda style, and get all the slimes back. Hmm. And the fighting element is all big tank battles. Big so, tank battles. Big tank battles. Like, like, big tank. Oh, yeah, yeah, okay. And when you're in the levels, you can collect your ammo. So, like, rocks, old columns, huh. platypuses, like, everything. I've never heard of this. So, is, is it hard to find? I, I've heard that it is, but it's not It's not expensive. Yeah. Like, I've had this since I pre-ordered it hmm. back in the day, so. Wow. One of my absolute favorites. All right, and then finally, we have a an adventure game that I've played a little bit of, Hotel Dusk, Room 215. It's very good. Have you finished this? I never finished it. This is one game I actually got my dad to play. It's cool, because <laughs> if I remember right, this is the game where, where you hold the, the DS sideways like a book, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. And it, it's very like old school adventure, kind of cruising around, talking to people, solving puzzles. It's a little bit um, noir. It's kind of nice. Yeah, yeah, the film noir. It's got, it's got, got this really cool hand-drawn kind of art style. Okay, so there are some of the hidden gems for this first episode, but we want to talk a little bit about the DS hardware. And you've you've got a couple here, and I've got one as well. So let, what's this red one here? First of all, I think it's beautiful. This one is the DS Lite. Okay. It's the second generation. It started with the DS Fat. Oh, yeah. Actually, I, I originally got a DS Fat back when too. they first came out, and uh, I'm kind of bummed that I sold it, to be honest. Yeah. I mean, even though it's big and... It's, it's the, a little clunky, it's but a little it's okay. Clunky. It's okay. cool though, right? It is cool. So this is the second one. Now, tell me about this one. Did they change much on it? Not really. It's just kind of smaller, okay. brighter. Yeah. Now you can still play uh, what Game Boy Advance or what? No. What, what? Game Boy Advance on the bottom. Okay. DS on the top. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. Very cool. This is the DSi. And this one, they actually took out the Game Boy Advance slot, which is the biggest drawback that there is for yeah, the DSi. Yeah. Yeah. Totally. Think. Um, they added a camera. Oh, uh, okay. Which is cool, I guess. And it can go on the internet, which is the I, right? It can go on the internet. And so they had a store, which you can go in and, and get applications and things like that. So um, it, it was cool. Um, I still bought it, so it had to be a little bit cool. Uh huh. So, but I still probably played my DS Lite a lot when this one came out, just for the Game Boy Advance slot. Yeah, hmm, that's interesting. But that's okay. And then here is just my variation of it. Although I got to be honest, it's it's the blue one. It's kind of flat. I'm not really crazy about it. I this wish is, that's the first one I got when I oh, okay. got mine. They were they're like we're all out of black. We got this blue yeah, one. Yeah, that's and why I, was I like, got well, this one. Well, I'll take it. I, I like that it's matte, kind of. Yeah, because it it stays kind of clean. But you can see here, like for whatever reason, you know, eating food and stuff like that, it looks a little grimy. Eating a lot of food while you're playing the DS. Always, always, <laughs> always. <laughs> well, very cool. Okay, this is the end of part one. I want to thank Kinsey for coming on. Of course. And and we are going to do part two very soon. As always, I want to thank you guys for watching my channel. And thank you for subscribing. Thank you. Take care.